Ah, I waited too long for that first drink of coffee in the morning. It's already cold. <laughs> Busy doing other things. Sharon Horn Nelson here. Day 522. I thought it was day 513, but it's day 522 of what she up to now. She, of course, be my initials like anyone cares about that. But what I'm doing is I'm documenting my journey in this little segment of transitioning from the offline world of brick and mortar businesses to the online world, to the internet world, the World Wide Web. I love saying World Wide Web because everybody's like, nobody calls it that anymore. That's like from 1991 or whenever the, the web first became available to us other human beings, not scientists in the government. So what a great time that was, right? That's also the year my son was born. So that was a good year all the way around. And I got married. There was all kinds of crazy things that year, right? Uh, so today, Pot Watcher, I, I titled this one Pot Watcher question mark because my question for you is, are you a pot watcher? Do you watch the pot? When you put a pot of hot water or hot water, you might use cold water. When you put a pot of water on the stove to make pasta or boil eggs or cook anything, quinoa these days, we make a lot of quinoa um, or couscous and all kinds of other grains and things that are available that we really didn't have access to um, even a decade ago. But do you stand around waiting and anticipating anxiously for the pot to boil? Do you wait for the pot to boil so you can get your pasta in as quickly as possible? Or do you go about your business and do something else, get your mind occupied while you wait for the pot to boil? Now, pot of boiling water, if you put a pot of water on a heat source, it's going to boil eventually, right? But how you feel about that time that goes by is going to vary greatly whether you're doing something productive during that time, what you're thinking about, or if you're standing around waiting for that pot to boil. Our thinking, our emotions, our feelings about what we're doing impact what we're doing and the speed at which we get it done. Our perception impacts how fast we get things done. I know we don't always think that, but it's absolutely true. I woke up this morning thinking about the things we focus on and what we want versus what we don't want or what we want versus the lack of what we want. Because really, so often, we think we're thinking about what we want. We think we're focusing on what we want. We think we're, we're anticipating and, and in a happy, positive way, waiting for it to come to us, when what we're really doing is every day we're waking up and we're noticing, I don't have this yet. We're not there yet. I don't have this new car. I don't have this new house. I don't have this new relationship. My business isn't where I want it to be yet. We always have to add the word, yet knowing that that adds the faith and belief that it is going to happen for us we just don't know exactly when and if we're taking actions every day we're enjoying the journey of moving toward that thing that we want and anticipating that it's it's as if it's already here we know it's on its way we're just not sure exactly when it's going to happen or trigger or show up in our lives if we're moving toward it every day if we're and not noticing the lack of it we're getting there a lot faster. We gain momentum. It's all based on our perception and our feelings about the things that we want versus the lack of them or the not having them yet. I see this in myself. I'm a human too. I see this in my coaching students. I see this in my kids. I see this in people I meet all the time. And we can hear it. I'm, I'm so guilty of it. I'm just kind of embarrassed because I know that I do this too. I'm talking about something and I don't always even notice that I'm, no, I'm, I'm actually talking about the lack of something that I want. I'm not there yet. I say this a lot about my online business journey, right? And instead of enjoying and being excited about every day in the process, a lot of times I say, I'm not where I want to be yet because I compare myself on the online world to my experiences in the offline world. Now, that is my big end goal. I'm focusing on creating the same amount of success I had in the offline world in the online world. And I need to remember that I'm enjoying the journey. I'm enjoying the pieces and the segments every day on the way to achieve that same type of success in each arena. But every time I say out loud, I'm not there yet, or why is this taking so long, or even think it, because a lot of times we don't even say it out loud, right? We don't even acknowledge to our conscious that we're thinking it or believing it, right? It's, it's shoved down in our subconscious, which is holding us back. And so one of the things I try to ask myself every day is and is to be be aware, be cognizant of things that are messed up in my thinking, beliefs that I have that, you know, I want to see the beliefs that are, because we all have conflicting beliefs too. We don't 
We don't know that we have conflicting beliefs because they're just our beliefs. They're, they're our sense of identity and who we are. And until we can openly see and say, well, does that work for me anymore? Oh my God, this belief about money totally conflicts about this belief about money. I'll tell you a funny one. I, for some reason, in a long time ago, picked up the belief that if I make more money, oh my God, I'm going to have to pay more taxes, right? And I didn't even realize that I had this belief. If I make more money, I'm going to have to pay more taxes. Somehow with me, paying more taxes felt like a negative thing, a bad thing. So I would limit the amount of money I would make because I didn't want to pay more taxes. Now, I don't know where that belief came from. I've never explored or thought about where that belief came from. Maybe somebody was complaining to me or said something about having to pay more taxes or having to pay a lot of taxes about something and that that was a terrible thing. Could have been when I was a little kid. I don't even know where it came from. But somehow, as I was discovering my beliefs, I had this belief that if you make more money, you have to pay more taxes and that's a bad thing. And when that it was, it was in my subconscious, I never even knew it existed, but I was putting a limiter or a cap on what I would allow myself to make. And I don't know what happened that had caused that to be revealed to me or I saw it and I had this aha moment. I'm like, oh my God, this conflicting belief is never going to allow me to make all the money that I want or to make the type of income that I think that I want and think I deserve, but I'm not making it because I'm putting this limiter on myself. And when I realized that that was the belief that was holding me back, I went through a couple of steps and I said, okay, now where did that come from? I don't even know where it came from. Maybe I believed it at a time, but is it true of me today? Is it helping me to make more money or is it preventing me from making more money? It was totally preventing me from making more money. And so I eliminated that. And I actually, after I eliminated that belief, I made $797,000 in one day, in one day. Now I didn't get to keep all that, right? I had to pay taxes. I actually had to split it with the ex-husband, but it didn't matter. It allowed me to see myself as capable and deserving and able to take that limiter off. It didn't matter that I was going to pay more taxes. All that mattered was because it just didn't matter anymore. It was like that was such a silly belief. And we have so many beliefs acting in our lives that we like that, like that we don't even realize and don't even know about until we say, okay, maybe I need to look at why this isn't happening for me or why this is happening to me. Because sometimes some of us make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Yes, yes, I am guilty of that. I've made the same mistakes over and over and over again until I get stabbed in the head by something that says, hello, you're going to keep making this mistake until you see it and it brings it up to the conscious level. And I will make that mistake and it'll be because my subconscious is trying to scream at my conscious and say, you better pay attention to this because this is going to kill you. And I am one of those people that that actually happened to. I was ignoring my health, not taking care of myself, ignoring my health, not taking care of myself, working like a chicken with my head cut off for years and for decades. And I kept getting messages from the universe saying, and from the world or whatever, or God, you are on the wrong track. And I would have a big health challenge. And then I would recover from that health challenge and I'd get right back on that same track. And I'd go for a few years and then I would have another more severe health challenge. And that was, you know, the world telling me, you are on the wrong track. You're on the wrong road. You're going in the wrong direction for your life. The direction that isn't right for you. Yes, that direction works for a lot of other people, but it's not the right direction for you. And I had another big health challenge, a bigger health challenge than the one before. And I recovered from that health challenge. And I got right back on that same road, that same track of not taking care of myself, doing too much, working all the time until I got on... I guess my, not my final, yeah, it was my final track because I had a sudden cardiac arrest and died. And that was the final wake up call for me because I'm here still talking to you today that I needed to, and that was the, that was the event that actually caused me to look at and understand and realize that I had been on the wrong track and that these other health events that I didn't even see as connected or even anything to do with meaning anything really were connected and they were like a sign. It's like the story about, um, there's a flood and there's a man that he's, you know, sitting on the roof of his house and he's waiting for someone to, to save him. And I'm going to blow the story, but I love this story. I learned it in network marketing decade or so ago uh, when I was in a network marketing company. Yes, I was in a network marketing company, a couple of them before. Uh, and the man's waiting on the roof of his house and 
a boat comes by and he they say come on hop in let's get off the house let me let me save you and and let's get you out of here and he says no 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 god will god will save me i'm i'm waiting for god to come and rescue me and so the boat goes away and saves some more people a little while later a helicopter flies by and the helicopter throws down a rope and says, hey, grab on, come on, we're going to save you. The water's getting higher. Pretty soon you're going to drown because the floods are getting worse. It's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. And he's like, no, 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 go save someone else. God will save me. And the water continues to rise and the flood, of course, overtakes the man's house. He's swept up in the current and in the waves and eventually drowns because he can't find anything to save him. All the rescue opportunities have gone by. And he's at the pearly gates of heaven and he says, you know, why didn't you save me when he meets God? He's like, God, why didn't you save me? And he's like, I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. What more was I supposed to do? And I think that that's how we have to look at our own lives and have to remember that story that we are here to save ourselves. And that involves understanding and learning more about ourselves. Anyway, I do love that story. I've got to learn how to tell it better because I, I know it's, and that's not the whole story. I know there's one more thing that comes for him and he still says no. And then everybody's like, what are you thinking? Sometimes we don't even see the opportunities or the things that are there to rescue and help us to help ourselves, right? To move in the direction that we want to go because we're not willing to see them. And that is based on our perception and our beliefs and the things that we think are true for us or our identity, who we think we are. Well, I'm just not smart enough to do that. I don't see myself ever making that happen. Well, if you don't see yourself ever making it happen, it's never going to happen for you. So are you a pot watcher? Do you wait and anticipate anxiously for something to happen, pushing it away and making it feel like it takes longer? Even if it doesn't, it feels like it takes longer and our perceptions are 100% real. How we feel and think about and observe the world is 100% real for us. It might not be reality to anybody else, but it is our reality. And our reality is actually the only reality that counts because it's the only reality, the only thing that we have control over and can change. Um, I've definitely been a, a pot watcher in my life and in my career, and I kind of hate to admit it, but there were times when I would micromanage people. There are times when I would do way too many things myself thinking that it was weak or I should never ask for help. I should just be able to figure it all out myself. There are times, and to me, that's being a pot watcher, trying to do everything myself, being a perfectionist, which I'm not really a perfectionist. I never was, but you know, that's the big excuse is don't be a perfectionist. Well, I never, I never really did anything perfectly, so I couldn't be a perfectionist, but I did way, do way too many things. And so I think that's being a pot watcher, thinking that you have to control and do everything yourself is being a pot watcher micromanaging people and thinking you have to tell them exactly what to do every time that is really stressful and anxiety driven and being a pot watcher it not only tells the person that you don't trust them but it tells yourself that you don't trust yourself to be able to pick and delegate and teach people what they need to do to be successful and to get the result that that you want from them and that they want to achieve as well and that's that's all in you and that's all our own personal insecurities and doubts and fears and worries about the outcome because guess what we can't control everything we never can I don't know what makes us think that we can I guess some of us are more control freaky than others and that's something that we don't have to continue to be and again that's that would be a belief why do I think I have to control everything why do I think I need to be a control freak I had to ask myself that yep that was another one I had to work on we all are works in progress right we all have to continually look at ourselves and look in the mirror and say is this working out for me? Am I getting the results I want? And if I'm not, well, what might be causing that? What might be the underlying current that's causing me to prevent myself from getting the result that I want right now? Sometimes we make things in our life take way longer than they have to. An example of that is me moving. I am still sitting in a house I should have been out of a decade ago. So what am I working on? That's what we're really here to talk about. The, the business journey from offline to online. And why is it taking so long? Well, because I am a pot watcher, right? So I'm going to stop watching my pot. I'm going to start delegating more and getting more help with things. Today, 90 day challenge, day 62, I believe. Yep, day 62. Uh, we're working on the sideways presentation and the new story, the internal um, robe, I call them, reasons, obstacles, or objections, beliefs, and excuses that a person might be looking at our solution and why they 
would be saying, oh, I can't do this. It's not for me. Yeah, I see it works for other people, but it won't possibly work for me. We're going through the steps that help to break that false belief, instill a new belief, and help them to see that they absolutely positively can do it. We, we put a component of our offer together that eliminates this belief and it instills the confidence in them that they can do it too. So that is the new story, the I knew I call it, is the internal news story that we're going to be talking about today. We'll create our video on that today in the 90 day challenge. Also working on a couple of other projects, a couple that I'm super excited about. I don't want to tell anybody about because I don't want to jinx them. Uh, so yeah, yeah, very exciting. And I'm thinking I need a haircut. I'm sick of wearing my hair up in a bun. I'm sick of looking like the wild woman of the West. And I don't even live in the West. I live in the Midwest. So I could be the wild woman of the Midwest. That would be fun. Pajama grandma, wild woman of the Midwest. I could get some six, six shooters. Isn't that what they're called? I don't think there's six shooters anymore, but whatever. So I wish you an absolutely amazing day. It is a brand new month. It is a brand new day. It's supposed to rain all week here, which is really frustrating because of course it's a holiday week. And whenever it's a holiday week, when most people can get vacations and enjoy and relax and, and recharge their batteries, we're gonna have rain all week. So here's an example of not being a watch pot. Instead of commiserating and feeling bad about the rain or about the weather, something, of course, we have nothing what to do with none we have no control whatsoever over the weather right only how we react to the weather i love this because weather is going to be what it is just like our lives can be what they are and it's all 100 percent how we choose to respond and react to it so i'm going to choose to find ways to sing it i won't sing in the rain i promise singing in the rain is bad because of my singing not because singing in the rain is bad it's actually kind of fun but I will find ways to enjoy this week in spite of the rain. Who cares, right? It's, it's going to be an awesome week. So go out, make it a fantastic week, a fantastic day. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the messages below because that's what I'm here for. I love connecting people with the tools and the resources and the people and the things that they need to supersize and grow their business and move your business and your life ahead. Take care. Bye. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.